Morning, guys. This is going to be a quickie. This is about Sheldon April, apron controls and primarily the friction clutch. The question that I get asked more than anything else about the Sheldon, the one that seems to crop up on the, on the uh, different forums and everything for mechanical properties on the EXL56s or the XL56s, which both of mine are, um, is the guys get that friction clutch locked up and they can't figure out how to undo it. Um, now, I'm not a Sheldon guru by any means. John Knox was a Sheldon guru, and unfortunately, he's passed on. But nonetheless, um, I've worked with this wore-out Sheldon behind me for 30-some years, and I'm rebuilding the other one. They're both virtually the same. So, uh, to me, there's only two things that can go wrong with these friction clutches or can cause them to be jammed up unless there's something internally that's just broken. And it's usually user-induced, whether it's a guy that's inadvertently jammed it up now or it got done previously and never got resolved or anything. Anyway, so I thought I'd very quickly go over the apron on this and just show you what I think are the only things that can possibly go wrong with these friction clutches to where they're locked up. So let me move the camera down and I'll show you what I think I know and you can take it for what it's worth. Okay, so hopefully I've got us in frame here pretty well. Now, of course, these are a standard traverse. This is thread engagement. Now, we've got three positions up here are the only thing that seemed to be confusing people a little bit. In the center position, we are thread engaged. So we can move our apron back and forth. We engage it just like we do and that locks it up. So we don't have to start the lathe to, to show how this works and what's going on with them. But anyway, so that's what the center section is. This left-hand position, this detent over here, is for our power cross feed and it's through the friction clutch and then clear to the right is the traverse on the apron left to right so uh, and these both operate the same now what happens with these friction clutches and we can see a little bit of friction now where you don't have it if you're and this is very well worn now see we don't have any resistance when we're in threading position or or not in a friction position so we put it in a friction position we've got a little bit of engagement our knobs spinning to engage this we turn it clockwise and that engages our friction clutch. So now it won't move because we're not traversing anything. If our lead screw was turning, of course, why it would traverse. So to disengage it, you turn it counterclockwise and then we've got movement again. The only two things that I think can are confusing people and can cause it, in my opinion, to lock up is this nut and this outer ring. Now this nut on both of mine anyway, is just a tension adjustment. You don't want to tighten it all the way down. Now we've got movement where we can traverse things. If we, well, and if we, we've got movement and we can engage our clutch or disengage it and it works. Now, if we tighten this all the way down, We have no movement of that. We're locked in position. We can't do anything unless we take it out and put it back in, in gear here. But anyway, if we're in friction position with this nut tightened all the way down, we have no movement whatsoever. We've locked it up. So this is just tensioned, and both of mine have, have a little bit of detent. Now, I've also shown this assembly when I disassembled the other Sheldon lays. So I'll link that up in the right hand corner of the description here so you can see it. But with this loosened up, we can now turn our turn our nut. We're engaged there, but we can loosen it to where we can traverse it again, whether longitudinally or across feet. So this is an adjustment here. Now the other thing that I think confuses people is that this knob has a left hand thread. So it's not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, it's lefty-tighty, righty-loosey. So what happens, I think, is guys go to disassemble these, they back them up here like this, and then you can't, um, you can't get it on off of there. So one way or another, they get jammed in position, and then they can't move them. So I think this is primarily, this outer nut is the biggest thing here. Um, the adjustment on that. But I also think that guys will get these, they'll try and take this off and they'll jam it so tight that they can't do anything with it. That would lock it in the, in the, um, 
undone position. But otherwise, looking at these internally, I don't really see any way that they can be jammed up. So just be aware of those two things. And it's primarily this nut that's locking everybody up to where they can't get them done because they tighten that all the way down thinking it needs to be tight. And it doesn't. It's, a, it's an adjustment for, or I consider it an adjustment for how far out you can, how far you can um, loosen this up. There we go. So anyway, hopefully that can, hopefully that doesn't confuse people even more and uh, gives a little bit of idea of something to look for. But primarily that, and if you disassemble it, it's the other way. If you take this nut all the way off, but to remove these, turn them to the right rather than the left, and then left to put it back on. And we can go snug there, it's still there. And then tighten our nut back down. But not all the way. There's tight, we're locked up. Nothing will move. Back it back up. I can even give it a little bit more than that. There we go. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of information. Comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below, guys. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.